Rahul Gandhi claims that only India is capable of taking on China. Is this true? This analysis looks into Gandhi's claim by examining key economic factors that support India's ability to take on China. While China is the world's second largest economy, India is the only country with the demographic size, growth trajectory, and market potential to emerge as a true counterbalance to China's economic dominance. Yes, we talk a lot about uh, increasing production and democracies, but do we have the capabilities to compete with China on that scale? Yeah, absolutely. We're the only people who have the capability to compete with China. This is a false notion that India cannot actually compete with China. We can never compete with China with the current business system because the largest players in the land have absolutely no incentive to compete with China. It's much simpler for a large monopolist to simply have access to the Indian market and then bring Chinese goods in here. First of all, you have to change the GST structure. Second, you have to reward people who produce, meaning we have to move from a model of GDP to a model of how many jobs are being created. Now, if we, are, if we constantly talk about GDP and we are not bothered about how many jobs are created, you're essentially punishing the producer. You require a change in the national mindset. How many of you, small businesses, how many of you have access to actual capital? Can you even conceptualize a world where your bank loans can be forgiven? No, for you, if you take a bank loan, you pay. If you don't pay, you go to jail. But for an Adani or for an Anbani, you take a bank loan, you don't pay, no problem. You take another bank loan. And they're not in the business of production. They're in the business of trading. They are actually the guys who sell Chinese products in India. So we have to rationalize some of these things. Banks, sure, they have to support big projects. Sure, they have to support an Adani. Sure, they have to support an Ambani. Well, we can have 10 Adanis and Ambanis, 15 Adanis and Ambanis, 20 Adanis and Ambanis. At least it becomes more fair. And then also, we can open channels for people like you. Before I dive in further, first I want to make an important point here. The rise of China and India is a return to the natural order of things. For the last 1,800 years, it has always been China and India leading the world in GDP. The meteoric rise of the West happened due to aberrations. Was that, it just modernism, the industrial revolution that destroyed that, that, it, or was it something else? No, that's the excuse that apologists like mm -hmm. to make that, you know, oh, it's not our fault, you just missed the bus for the industrial revolution. Well, we missed the bus because you threw us under its wheels. No doubt, India is competing with China. However, unlike other countries, India doesn't sell weapons to Taiwan, its politicians don't publicly bemoan China, and its government doesn't fund propaganda and lies about China. First, let's examine India's demographic advantage. With a population exceeding 1.4 billion and a median age of just 28, India boasts a youthful workforce ready to drive economic growth. India will be the third largest economy soon. In contrast, China faces the challenge of an aging population where a shrinking workforce is burdened by rising health care costs and pension obligations. This demographic dividend positions India uniquely on the global stage. A very talented population in India. Um, it's a young population, average age of, of 28. Um, we know here in America how uh, well-educated Indians are. I... The potential and opportunity for India, the impact on India's society and industry, and so I was delighted to be here to talk about it. India, as you know, is also home of some of the world's greatest computer scientists. So this is a great opportunity. And so I'm looking forward to partnering with India. India is the home of the third largest startup economy. Clearly appreciate the effort from the Prime Minister to learn and understand what we need to continue to expand in India. And we just announced that we are expanding our manufacturing capabilities in India. And we are proud to be partnering with India. We, we are robustly investing in AI in India. Also very excited to hear about the commitment of so many other companies like Accenture to continue to grow our business in India and to have our, our individuals in India serve the globe. It's an exciting time. India's economy is not just growing, it's evolving. With a GDP growth rate of around 7% in 2023, India is rapidly closing the gap with China. 
Driven by a burgeoning middle class and robust domestic consumption, the country is projected to become the third largest economy by the next decade. Moreover, India's celebration of its G20 presidency was seen as a demonstration of its emerging soft power, as it showcases the country's growing influence and reputation on the global stage. India is currently the fifth largest economy in the world, and economists project that it will surpass Germany and Japan to become the third largest economy within the next decade. India has surpassed Japan to claim the third spot in the Asia Power Index, marking a significant shift in the Asia-Pacific's geopolitical landscape as per a statement by the IB Ministry. Unlike China's export-driven model, India's strength lies in its domestic market, with over 500 million people expected to join the middle class by 2030. This presents a golden opportunity for global businesses. India's large, untapped market presents significant opportunities for global businesses. With sectors like retail, telecommunications, e-commerce, and healthcare growing rapidly, India can leverage its market size to attract investment and compete with China across multiple industries. The COVID-19 pandemic exposed vulnerabilities in global supply chains, and India is emerging as a preferred alternative for manufacturing. Initiatives like Make in India are attracting foreign investment, with global giants shifting production to Indian shores. Hundreds of engineers will soon be occupying these empty workstations to drive India's semiconductor ambitions. We're in the Chennai facility, right? Um, we do a lot of innovation on access points. These are like Wi-Fi's in your enterprise, in your homes, and so on and so forth. All that, uh, all those things are getting developed right here. Uh, both the chips, the software, the system level stuff is done with the folks that sit in this office. India is not just a manufacturing hub. It's a digital revolution, home to a thriving IT sector and a rapidly growing fintech market. The country is embracing innovation like never before. With over a billion mobile users, India's digital economy is projected to reach $1 trillion by 2030. The startup ecosystem is flourishing, with over 100 unicorns leading the charge into the future. These technological advancements provide India with the tools to compete with China in the realms of artificial intelligence, e-commerce, and digital infrastructure. Economic reforms are paving the way for India's growth story. From the implementation of the goods and services tax to labor law reforms, India is positioning itself as an attractive destination for global investors. In conclusion, Rahul Gandhi's assertion resonates with the potential embedded in India's demographic advantages, economic growth, and technological innovation. With the right reforms and investments, India stands ready to counterbalance China's dominance on the global stage. If we come to power in India at the national level, we will remove this GST and change it. I'd like to thank all of you. I'm sorry I could not spend more time with you.